Recently I made a video about the Knight F6 variation of the Scandinavian defense, which is the right way to play the Scandi. And this is another reason why I love playing the Knight F6 variation of the Scandinavian defense, because you have the chance to play the Icelandic Gambit, which is one of the most aggressive openings you can ever think of. So let me show you guys how this works. You're gonna start, uh, your opponent's gonna start by playing e4, you're gonna play d5, that's the Scandinavian defense. After your opponent takes the pawn, you're not going to take back with the queen, that would be the normal line. You're gonna play knight f6, inviting your opponent to play the knight f6 Scandinavian defense. Your opponent might play knight here or maybe pawn here and you're gonna take this pawn. I explained that in the, the mentioned video, I can leave a card up here so you can check it out. But if your opponent goes for this move, you have the chance to play the Icelandic Gambit by pushing the pawn to e6. So when you play this move onto e6, more often than not, more than 70% of the time, according to the Lee Chess database, your opponent is going to take this pawn. And after they take, we're going to recapture with the bishop. Bishop takes e6. And we're sacrificing a pawn here to get some uh, uh, advance in uh, our development. So our development is going to be much better than white's here. And we're going to attack very quickly. After a move like d4, for example, we're going to play bishop b4 check. And after your opponent plays knight to c3 to block the check, which is the most common move here, they can go for the bishop block as well. They can go for this move. We're going to check this out after, but this is the most common one. After they block the check here, we're going to play this very interesting move, knight to e4, and you can see a lot, a lot of arrows here, a bunch of arrows. This might be overwhelming for you, but don't worry, I'm going to explain you what this means. We're going to play this move knight to e4, centralizing our knight, and we are attacking so many things here that is overwhelming for white. First of all, our knight is attacking the knight here that is pinned. So this knight is pinned by the bishop, and we are attacking with uh, the knight here. This pawn is being attacked, the central pawn, the pawn is being attacked by the queen, and if white blocks this queen that is defending the pawn, we can take this. And the bishop is attacking the c pawn, and if they block this bishop that is defending the pawn, we can go ahead and take it. And no matter what white plays here, they are going to lose something. If they go for a 92, for example, trying to defend this knight here, they end up blocking this bishop, and we can go ahead and take this pawn right here. We're going to analyze this a little bit later. If they go for queen c2, trying to defend this knight here, what happens? They move the queen so this pawn is unprotected, we can go ahead and take the pawn. If they play a move like, uh, for example, um, let me see this bishop here, which is uh, bishop to d2, which is the move trying to protect this knight and break the pin again, uh, they block the queen to protect this pawn right here, so we can go ahead and grab the pawn uh, in this position. So no matter what white plays here, they are going to lose something. Let's take a look at this move first. If they play knight here, trying to defend this knight, again, they are blocking this bishop, so we can go ahead and take the pawn. And after a move, let's say like a3, we can just play this move queen to h4, which is a very common, typical move here. Guys, we're threatening mate here. If you guys didn't notice, we're threatening checkmate here. And they have to do something, for example, here play g3, we're going to take uh, with check, and after knight takes queen to e7, we have a great game here in this position. We're certainly winning this game. Uh, this position here, after queen moves here trying to protect the knight, we can go ahead and snap the pawn. This is the best move that we can go for. We have all our pieces, just the knight here we have to develop, but everything is developed. And if you look at white's position, they are extremely passive in this position. If they go for this move uh, right here, which is probably the most annoying one uh, with the check, we can block the check with the knight. We're still developing our pieces here. After d5, we play queen to f6, again, threatening checkmate here. Uh, white has to do something about this. After knight to f3 blocking, we're going to take uh, that knight, knight takes c3. After pawn takes, queen takes, and again, take a look at this, guys. Extremely powerful attack. After bishop blocks, queen 
takes Rook in the corner, guys. We are winning this, winning a lot of material here. And after Queen comes back, you could trade Queens here and you would still be winning, but you have a stronger move. Taking the Bishop first, and then you can go for this check here. And after Queen E2, you might go for a trade here, whatever. You are up material, you're up a Rook here, and you're certainly winning. This is minus nine for black, according to the engine, so you were probably winning this game. The most challenging move, though, um, after this position, uh, after queen here, is actually playing uh, queen uh, bishop here, right? So we have this position, I'm sorry. And after this position here, this move, which is probably the most annoying one, we have bishop to d2. And after that, we're going to take the pawn again. We're recapturing the pawn that we gambited. And after knight takes e4, we take with the queen with check, knight to e2 to block. We develop our knight to c6, and here we can choose which way to castle. If bishop takes, we cannot castle short here due to the uh, bishop blocking the diagonal. But we can take the bishop. After queen check, we can go back with the knight. White's probably going to castle here. We can castle short, and that's a great game for us. This is a great game. We have all our pieces developed. Uh, and materials pretty much equal here. It's a great position for us. If we go back, oops, let me move back here to this position where we have the knight blocking. Instead of that, they can go ahead and choose to block not with the knight here, but with the bishop instead. If they go for bishop d2 here, you can go ahead and play queen to e7. Very sneaky move, preparing some discoveries. After bishop takes, you can take with the queen Queen is going to block, we play knight to c6. After this move, like d5, they think they're forking us here. We're going to castle long, and when we castle long, we're actually pinning this pawn. They cannot take uh, any of the pieces. Queen takes, we take back with the knight. And here, guys, we have an interesting situation. Uh, this is being uh, threatened here, but if they take here, we can play knight to c2 check, and uh, after the king moves, we can play rook h to e8. We're pinning that pawn, knight to c3. We can take the pawn, we check. After the king moves, we can finally grab the rook in the corner. We could go for it right away. In this position here, we have the situation where instead of moving the pawn, they can move the knight over there, protecting the squares, uh, but we can still have this move bishop to f5 here, which is a great position for black as well. So this is one of my favorite openings, guy. When when uh, opponent actually goes for this move right here, c4, and we have the chance to play the Icelandic gambit by pushing e6. This is such a great position, especially when we reach this point after takes, bishop takes, d4, and I play check and they block with the knight, and I play this incredible move knight to e4, I know my opponent is going to blow. Uh, they're not going to hold this position. They never know what to do. And whatever move white goes for here, they're going to lose something. It's a great position. And if you like very aggressive and attacking chess, this opening is the one for you. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below if you liked. And I see you guys as always in the next one.